reason why people say, I heard it on KPFA. This is Earl Johnson Jr., the local election supervisor for KPFA. We need candidates to run for the local station board and work with station management to ensure that programming fulfills the purpose of the foundation and to the listening community. Review budgets and help with fundraising. Nominations close June the 30th. Please visit elections.pacifica.org or call 510-848-6767, extension 605. Become a candidate today. Good evening. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF Fresno, 97.5 K248BR Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org. The time is 9.01. Stay tuned for an all-new episode of Suspense entitled That Which Has a Name. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. Located in the hinterlands between France and Spain exists the home of the Basque people. Long believed to be the world's only direct descendants of Cro-Magnon man, the Basque are a fiercely independent seafaring folk who traveled to the four corners of the globe. With them, they took their singularly unique language and customs that were old when the Roman Empire was in its ascendancy. Among these customs is a belief encapsulated in the folk saying, that which has a name exists. The Basque feel that by attaching a name to a place or a thing, it gains a life of its own. The belief applies to anything from a family home to the figures from their rich mythology, including the Christmas spirit Olincero and other darker creatures. Friends, a toast to Representative Andrew J. Volstead, who made me the man I am today. And what a man Volstead made. You got that right, doll. Eight years ago, I didn't have two pennies to rub together. Now, I'm living it up with the swells of Beacon Hill. I hope Prohibition runs another eight years. If it does, I'll have every inch of Beantown bought and sold. Sounds like a peach of the future, Nathan. I hope I'm around to see it. Play your cards right, darling, and you will be. Oh, want to dance, Nathan? Nah, but I'd like to watch you, Maggie. You got all the right equipment for the Charleston, so go get hot, doll. Oh, you. <laughs> Mr. Wallace. O'Donnell, what are you doing here? Sorry to intrude, Mr. Wallace, but I got some news for you you gotta hear. Something that couldn't wait until tomorrow? Maybe you didn't notice, but I'm having a party, and you don't exactly blend in with such Tony company. I wouldn't have stopped by, Mr. Wallace, but it's something big, real big. Only we might want to talk somewhere more private. Big, huh? Okay, this way.
So what is it? Mr. Wallace, there's this Spaniard who's into us for two G's. A long-standing debt of his father's that we ain't gonna wait on any longer. Only, he ain't got it. And you don't know what to do. This better not be your big news that couldn't wait, O'Donnell. Th that's not it, boss. It's, it's not that he owes us and doesn't have it. It's what he's willing to give us instead. Something worth way more than two G's. Pfft, what? Some family heirloom he claims is worth a fortune? A flivver that wouldn't make it to the end of the block? The deed to some Hockamock swampland? No, sir. Information. Information? Of the finest kind. The Spaniard claims to know a series of secret tunnels running from the harbor district all the way under the north end to Back Bay. And he's serious? Dead serious. Uh, he'd better be. Or else dead is exactly what he'll end up. Okay, set up a meeting, O'Donnell. I want to see these tunnels for myself. And I want to see them tonight. Tonight? You sure, boss? You listen, and listen close. The Italians in the north have been using their hold on the harbor area to muscle in in our operation. But if these tunnels really exist, we can run bootleg liquor right under their noses 24 hours a day. They'll be out of business within a month. And what's Esposito going to pay his goons with after he's broke? No, Donald. I've been waiting for this opportunity to bury the Italians for three years now. And now that I have the means to bury them, I'm not going to wait another day to get started shoveling. You got me? Got it, Mr. Wallace. Aspinwall, 56403. Doyle, it's O'Donnell. Mr. Wallace and I want to go for a little drive. One hour, north end. Nice and quiet. Just you, me, Mr. Wallace, and a couple of torpedoes. Good. Oh, and round up some electric torches. I'll go set things up with the Spaniard. Okay, meet you downstairs. Everything okay, Nathan? Maggie, I gotta go out. You keep playing the happy hostess while I'm gone. Keep the booze flowing and they won't even notice I left. Oh, what's going on? Something's up. Something big? Big enough that I might own this city a whole lot sooner than I expected. Nathan, what is... Maggie. Okay, okay. Just be careful, lover. Come back in one piece. You should know by now, Maggie. It's anyone who crosses me that's got to worry about staying in one piece. I know. Still, just the same. Look, I gotta go see a man about a dog. Goodbye, Maggie. We're right in the heart of Karma and Esposito's territory. So look sharp. Relax, Mr. Wallace. Sean and I got Thompson's, Mick the trench gun, and all of us are packing 45s. Between us, we don't lack for heat. O'Donnell, you sure this Spaniard's on the level? Yeah, boss. He's screwy for sure. Always going on about joining his ancestors. But he knows better than to futz with us. Yeah, well, he better. This is the place, Mr. Wallace. Corner of henchmen and charter. Mick, Sean, 
Take a look around. Make sure this place is clean. Right, Mr. Wallace. Doyle, you stay with the caddy just in case we need to take it on the lamb. Or in case we need to take this Spaniard for a little ride. Got it. O'Donnell, you want to take my Tommy gun just in case? Aye. Thanks, Doyle. It's clean, boss. None of Esposito's boys waiting to jump us. Good. So where's our Spaniard? I ain't got all night. He'll be here any minute, Mr. Wallace. He was at a speakeasy a couple of blocks over when I got hold of him. Oh, well, that's him, Mr. Wallace. The Spaniard. Good evening. My name is Aguirre, gentlemen. And I beg your pardon, but I am not Spanish. My ancestors came from Navarre, in the lands of the Basque people. Spanish, Basque, what's the difference? Far greater than that between your people and the hated English, I believe. What are you, a wise guy? Not at all. I am but a simple whaler, as the members of my family have been since long before any European walked these lands. Whaler? What are you, a goof? There hasn't been a whaling ship out of Boston since you were in short pants. Quite true. But I am a whaler because my family have always been whalers. Even after the ship stopped sailing and we had to take whatever dock work we could find, no matter how menial or low-paying. It is why my father ended up in debt to you. Even with both of us working, we could never do more than pay on the interest that he owed. Then your men began making threats. My father was a proud man. And the shame was more than he could bear. So he took his own life. I will soon join him. And you're welcome to do so. But not before you give us certain information that will square your debt. Of course not, Mr. Wallace. I will show you just what I have promised and will thereby settle our account. Shall we? Lead the way, Mr. Basque. And no funny stuff. I assure you, Mr. Wallace, that there will be nothing funny about this night. So where are we heading? To nearby Copse Hill, where the nearest tunnel entrance is located. Copse Hill? You mean the old town cemetery? Yes. So these tunnels you told O'Donnell about, how many are there? Dozens, perhaps more. They crisscross what used to be Old Town Boston, from the harbor to the very edge of the back bay. There are entrances hidden deep under many homes built before the 19th century. But why? And by who? Some say smugglers, from the earliest days of the Massachusetts colony. Or perhaps abolitionists helping runaway slaves flee the South. You don't sound too convinced. Mr. Wallace, almost every entrance is bricked very tightly shut. Only a few long-forgotten ones, such as that at Cobbs Hill remain at all accessible. Such diligence would seem to imply a recent beyond smugglers or runaway slaves. Such as? There are tales of ghouls and other monstrous creatures lurking in darkness beneath the city. Creatures that, by night, venture forth to prey upon the dead and upon the living who are foolish enough to enter their domain. Ha! Huh. What a load of bourgeois. Yes, <laughs> of course it is. Nothing but old wives' tales. But you did ask, after all. Still, you can't blame folks for believing those stories. Just look at this place. Yeah, I half expect to see spooks behind every tombstone. Hey, you two want to put a sock in it? Sorry, Mr. Wallace. Behind that stone door is the entrance we seek. But, but that's a crypt. No, it is but a facade. Inside, there is a long stairway leading deep into the bowels of the earth. Okay, boys. Open it. We're on it, Mr. Wallace. Hey, what is that? What is what? On the door. Looked like something written there. I could see it in the moonlight for a second. Didn't look like English, though. Oh, that. No. No, it is not English. It is Basque. A name. Whew! What a stench! This door has not been opened in more than a century. That is, until now. It smells like something died. 
What did you expect, dum-dum? A rose garden? Think about where we are. I know, boss. But it's not that sort of dead. It smells too... new. Lights. All right, let's go. Mick, you lead the way. Sean, you cover our backs. Got you, boss. This staircase, it's almost impossibly deep. Yeah, we must be nearly 100 feet underground already. These stairs weren't made by some monster. No, they were carved by man. By those who serve the dark things that dwell beneath the surface. Well, I gotta tell you... This is one swell joint you got here, Mr. Basque. Wouldn't even make a good home for a self-respecting rat. You will find no rats here, Mr. Wallace. No rats. The sewers are thick with them. Why not here? You would not believe me if I were to simply tell you. Yeah, well, try me. All will become clear soon enough, Mr. Wallace. So how did you come upon this information in the first place? My family has lived in Boston for more than 200 years, Mr. Wallace. We have learned many things. Yeah? No kidding. Maybe you've got some other tips like this one you want to share with me. I fear not. I will not be sharing anything with anyone else once my debt to you has been paid. Good. Because I'd hate to think you were telling anyone else about this. Like the Italians, for example. If I thought that was happening, it would be bad for your health. Real bad. You speak of my language? I understand your meaning, Mr. Wallace. Aguirre, you said that was a name I saw written on the door. Yes, a name. I wrote it there myself, not long after we first spoke, Mr. O'Donnell. Hey, fellas, watch your step back there. There's bones underfoot. Gotcha, Mick. A name? Name of what? Something from the distant past of my people. Gueco. Gueco? What's a... a Gueco? A fearsome beast of legend that dwells in dark places. All shadow and fangs and claws. Its very name means... of the night. The tunnel splits here. Three different directions. Which way? We should continue straight. Continue straight? So, why would you write that on the door? As a reminder of things that were, and may yet still be. Gueco, huh? We have something like that back home in the Emerald Isle, too. Yeah, the Puka. A big hairy beastie he is. He steals folks away on his back and takes them for frightening rides through the night sky before returning them to the earth. That may be, gentlemen. But the Gueco is said to do far worse to a man than take him for a ride. And the belief in the Gueco far predates that of your Puka. Predates the Puka? Why, his legends were old when the first missionaries arrived in Ireland. There is an old saying. When God created the first man, he got the bones from a Basque graveyard. Mr. Wallace, we are a very old people. More bones underfoot here. 
Lots of them, so be careful. Gotcha. You hear that, Sean? Sean? Hey, there's, uh, there's, there's something funny about these bones. Sean, you're back there. What the hell? Th these these bones have been, have been gnawed on. Sean! Sean! And not by rats, neither. By something big. Aguirre, this is some kind of trick? A trick? Yeah, a trick. Like maybe you tipped off the Italians about our little midnight visit. And they're hiding in wait for us down here, looking to give us the business in private. I can safely say that the four of us are the only living persons down here. Oh, so it's just the four of us down here, is it? We'll see about that. Wait, you said the four of us. You mean five. You, me, Mr. Wallace, Mick and Sean. No, I mean four. What's that supposed to mean? Well? Look, maybe Sean made a wrong turn at the junction. We should go back and find him. And maybe Sean didn't make a wrong turn. If this is a double cross, first thing we do is ice Aguirre. We were going to do that anyway after he gave up the info. But we might have to do it sooner than expected. Right, boss. Mick, we're going back to look for Sean. You take the lead again. And keep your eyes peeled. Right. You must think you're pretty clever, Mr. Basque. Why do you say that? Getting us down here in these tunnels. Sean disappearing without a sound. This whole spook show bit about the Gueco. Ah, so you do agree with Mr. O'Donnell? Maybe. Maybe not. But either way, something fishy is going on. If I am so clever, Mr. Wallace, then why am I down here with you? After all, if it is a trick, then the first thing you will do is kill me. Because you knew we wouldn't come here without you. That is true. And I very much needed you to come here. So you admit it, that you're working for Esposito and this whole Gueco business is a load of malarkey. That's not what I mean at all. Then what? Saints preserve us! What the hell was that? Something just reached out of the darkness and took Mick, plucked him up like a rag doll and pulled him into that side tunnel. Mick! 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 We have to do something. I'm going after him. No! O'Donnell, think, man, think! Mick's dead already, so we either stick together or else we'll be joining him. Right. Right, Mr. Wallace. Izina duyen guzia omenda. What? What did you say? In English, it would be, that which has a name, exists. What's that supposed to mean? Just what it says. If something has a name, it exists. Like the Gueco. What? You're telling me that's some Basque boogeyman offing my boys? You expect me to buy that story? What you believe will become irrelevant in just a few short moments, Mr. Wallace. Ah, bull. It's just a couple of Esposito's punks hiding in the shadows. But we're on to them. And if they think that Nathan Wallace is going to be had so easily, they're all wet. Come on, O'Donnell. Let's keep moving. <laughs> O'Donnell! Sweet Jesus! It's real! It's... it's real! And you knew! Aguirre, you knew! Yes. But why? Why? It's... it's gonna kill you too! I was dead no matter what I would have done. You would have seen to that once I gave you what you wanted. But I needed to settle my father's debt before I join him. And soon, very soon, it will be settled. You're crazy! I'm not going to just stand here and let that thing get me. I'm Nathan Wallace. No. No. No! Now our debt is settled, Mr. Wallace. Aizina duyen guzia omenda. Zina Duyen Guzia Omenta!
So Ends That Which Has a Name by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions. Tonight's radio drama was written especially for Suspense by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Scott Henry was Nathan Wallace. Rocky Cerda was Aguiar. Sean Hackman was O'Donnell. Catherine Kamey was Maggie. Daniel Hackman was Sean. Steve Moulton was Mick. Damon Crawl was Doyle. And Dana Perry Hayes was the operator. I'm Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in... Suspense. Suspense. from Pennsylvania are the best in the world. Which reminds me, I hate it when shabby relatives show up unannounced and want to lay claim to your entire day and your designer coffee. Then it's time to brew up a batch of swill. Swill takes the most rancid beans available anywhere and then subjects them to the patented swill process. Each and now, every bean passes through the sure, intestinal yeah. tract of three large mammals am, before being bagged and left under a leaky radiator till they reach the peak of imperfection. Believe me, one cup of, of, of swill, and, and the only Better thing they'll be the begging like chimps for they, is they the door. Back to the 16th century. I'll tell you more. But first, let me share something from my trip to the Museum of Magical Oddities. Ugh, this coffee tastes like month-old deep fryer grease filtered through a hobo's underwear. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. Swill when you just don't care. What do you think of this endless war? All these endless American wars destroying so damn much. Certainly most people on Earth believe they're wrong, just grotesquely wrong. A strong new book by Mark Danner, Spiral, Trapped in the Forever War, offers necessary clarity and a way to stop what is called our global war on terror. Danner will discuss this July 13th, the Wednesday evening at the Hillside Club, 2286 Cedar Street in Berkeley at a KPFA benefit. Wheelchair accessible, hosted by Linda Corey, formerly of the Journal for Palestine Studies, now a producer for KPFA's Upfront Show. Advanced tickets at brownpapertickets.com and supportive indie bookstores. Find more information on kpfa.org for Mark Danner, July 13th, ending this forever war. Smiley, one of our very greatest storytellers. My name is Chris Welch. I love her work. Jane Smiley won the Pulitzer Prize for her novel, A Thousand Acres. She's often compared to Saul Bellow, John Updike, Philip Roth. Hmm. All men, what's up with that? Jane has now completed the last novel of her trilogy, The Last Hundred Years, a big juicy story called Golden Age. She's going to be presenting this at St. John's Presbyterian Church, 2727 College Avenue in Berkeley, Wednesday evening, June the 29th at 7.30, and I will be your host. This KPFA benefit is wheelchair accessible. There is substantial free parking. Tickets at brownpapertickets.com and the very best independent bookstores. June 29th, folks. The one and only Jane Smiley.